welcome to Keysight Technical Clips. In this video, we will look at the main features offered by the phase noise measurement application on the Keysight X-Series signal analyzers. Spectrum analyzers can be used to measure phase noise by way of the direct spectrum technique, which means we simply and directly tune to the input signal and measure its power spectral density at various offset frequencies. This is the oldest technique in the book and works well when the intrinsic phase noise of the analyzer is better than that of the device under test at the offset frequency of interest. For today's tutorial, the signal under test is a CW signal at 2 GHz and minus 10 dBm being output by a signal generator. On the analyzer, our first step is to go to the phase noise mode by pressing mode and then phase noise. By default, we are in the monitor spectrum mode which allows us to view our signal in the frequency domain and verify that the spectrum we are seeing is what we expect to see. I will change my carrier frequency to 2 GHz to match my input signal and I can see that indeed my carrier is as expected. We now switch to the log plot measurement by going to measure and then log plot. This is the most common display used for measuring phase noise where the single sideband phase noise is displayed in dBc per hertz versus offset frequencies from the carrier. If the carrier is minus 50 dBm or more in power, the analyzer can auto-tune to it. After tuning, we can make finer adjustments to the center frequency uh, and to the offsets desired. And in this case, I will change my stop offset to 10 MHz and then press restart after making any changes to get a fresh measurement. The yellow line is my raw trace data and the blue line behind it is a smooth version. I can adjust the amount of smoothing done under measure setup and smoothing. I can also get a tabular view of the various decades by going to measure setup, more and decade table on. This shows me my power spectral density values from the raw trace as well as the smooth trace versus the actual offset frequencies. Now I can also apply markers to this log plot trace to get specific measurements including integrated noise, residual FM, and average noise density. Let's turn on marker 1. We do that by pressing marker which turns on a green marker in the center of the screen. Then I go to marker function and choose integrated noise. Press that again to enter another menu where I can select the unit of, of my choice. The choices I have are degree, radian, second, and dBc. For the moment, I'm going to choose second. And if you observe the marker, there are two green lines on either side. These delineate delineate the band where my actual uh, integrated noise calculation is being performed. I can adjust this by going to band adjust and in this case I will set my left edge to 1 kilohertz and the right edge to 10 kilohertz. I can turn on multiple markers by going to the marker key, select marker 2, set normal, go to marker function, choose integrated noise, switch to second, band adjust, and I am going to make this 10 kilohertz to the left and 100 kilohertz to the right. I will turn on one more marker. And set this to be between 1 megahertz and 100 kilohertz. Notice that the marker readout always reads out the active marker, its frequency offset, and its function value. In this case, I'm getting about 68 femtoseconds. I can display all markers at the same time by going to Marker, More, and Marker Table On, which gives me a table in the lower half of the window showing the position of the marker, as well as any functions that are turned on, and their corresponding values. Now, one common technique in phase noise measurements is to use cancellation, which means to make a reference trace and then subtract the reference trace from our measurement. The reference trace can usually be the noise floor of the analyzer or the log plot trace of another signal source which is known to have lower phase noise than the dot and the analyzer. 
So let's turn all of this off and perform a Danel floor cancellation. So to do this, first I go to Measure Setup, change the measure type to Danel floor. Then I make a, I set my average number. I set it to average and press Restart, which will average the noise floor about ten times. We can see it updating over here. Keep in mind that cancellation is only beneficial for some specific measurements depending on the phase noise of the dot and how it relates to the analyzer's phase noise. Generally, cancellation will not help if the dot's phase noise is more than 10 dB above the analyzer's phase noise or if it is within 0.1 dB of the analyzer's phase noise. Okay, now that our average has completed, let us go to Trace Detector more, copy exchange, choose trace 2 which is our smooth trace, trace 3 is our reference trace, we copy from trace, trace 2 to trace 3, say copy now. Next we go to measure setup, more, cancellation, make sure our reference trace is trace 3 which contains a copy of our smooth trace measured from the Daniel floor. Turn cancellation on and you can see it update here. Go to measure setup, change back to phase noise and then push restart to make a fresh measurement. And that's how you do cancellation. The phase noise application also offers two advanced features for log plot measurements and these are AM rejection and overdrive. These can be chosen by going to Measure Setup, More, Advanced. AM rejection works for offsets less than 1 MHz. Essentially, it will remove the AM sidebands of carrier signals. By default, this is on in the application and can be toggled between on and off states in this menu. Be sure to perform a fresh measurement by pressing Restart after making your selection. The other feature available is overdrive, which works for offsets greater than 1 MHz. It improves the dynamic range by optimizing the mechanical attenuator and the electronic attenuator if it's available. The trade-off is slower operation and a slight increase in measurement uncertainty. Finally, our log plot trace data and measurement results can be exported in CSV format by going to Save, Data, choose what we would like to save, and then press Save As. Use your mouse and keyboard to save to the preferred location. We can also save screenshots and state files. So that's it for the log plot measurement. Now let's take a look at the spot frequency measurement which we can turn on by going to Measure and then Spot Frequency. Let's also set our carrier frequency to 2 GHz. The Spot Frequency measurement provides a time domain view of phase noise measured at a specific offset frequency from the main carrier signal. We can choose the desired offset under Measure Setup and then Spot Offset. I am going to choose 100 kHz as an example. The default display shows a graphical time domain view of the phase noise measured at that specific offset. It shows also the delta frequency between the initially detected carrier frequency and the carrier frequency currently being detected. And of course the SSB measurement. We can change this to a tabular view under view display and then numerical. The phase noise trace is maintained and we now see additionally a table showing the last 101 spots and the phase noise measured at each of those spots. Under the sweep control key is a sweep time parameter and this determines how much time elapses between two successive spot measurements. And then finally we can export the last 101 spots by going to save, 
data and save as. And that's all there is to it. For questions, please feel free to contact us at the Keysight Technical Contact Center by phone, email, or chat at www.keysight.com slash find slash contact us. Thanks for watching.